Here in the side door, I'm going to build a little cabinet for battery chargers. So I'm debating between these two style chargers. I have these flat quad units. I've got three of these. And then I also have three of these travel. I call them my travel chargers. They've got the top handle. So they're a little bit more uh, convenient carrying in and out of location and in the hotel rooms at night to charge. But uh, I carry two on the van. I have a third with my camera package that's in Los Angeles. This one died on a shoot a few days ago. I think I can fix it. This one, the screws shook out and they're in the cabinet. I just got to take it apart and fix it. But couple of thoughts here. I like having my personal luggage. It's a little roller airline luggage unit. It fits nicely right here. Convenient to access. And I don't have enough width if I do two of these side by side. So I'd have to stack them vertically like this, which could be pretty good because the audio mixer also needs a home. It's been riding on the cabinet over there under that gray bag but I could make three slots about the same size, have the audio mixer up here and the two chargers. But for the same vertical stack height, just slightly wider, I could actually put three of these chargers in, which would give me, uh, give me the ability to charge, what is that, 10, four, eight, 12, huh, 12 batteries when I'm on the road versus eight, and I carry 12 Piper cores, and then these are all old batteries. I'm getting down to, what do I have? I have four B for Bs. I had a lot of these Comair batteries and they've all died. I think I had 12 or 14 of them down to two. Every day, last four or five days. So I have not started on this project. Sun's starting to burn off right now, but I'm putting in a pure sine wave inverter. I'm going to put this behind the driver's seat on the partition as high as I can get it while still allowing the seat to go back all the way on the rails and or recline all the way. So I got that lined up and then it works out that it'll be horizontal and it's high enough that I can still lift out my fire extinguisher. I'm using these self-tapping metal screws. These are probably, these might be, no, I think the length's right. They might be a little long. They're going to go through the cabinet and into my wood countertop on the other side. And eventually I'd like to nut washer and bolt these. I bought that hardware, but that's going to require me to pull the cabinet out. And I just want to get this in quick because I've got multiple days on the road coming up where I need to charge batteries while I'm driving. So I used the Sharpie to mark the right two holes. And the trick with these self-tapping metal screws, and you can get these at any hardware store, it's a drill bit on the end. But when you're drilling in the steel, it's going to wander all over the place before the bit bites. So you need to use a metal punch with a hammer to put a little dent in the divider. Now I have several punches, but I'm too lazy to dig them out of the garage. So instead I put this on the drill and I just before rotating pushed really hard and I was able to dent into the paint and the steel just enough that the bit bites. All right, that was easy. The inverter included these vibration and current isolators. They keep the chassis from grounding out on the surface it's mounted on, and they also act as a little bit of a shock absorber for vibration. Inverter's installed, positive side, wiring is complete. I had to make a one foot jumper cable that goes into this circuit breaker. So this is the disconnect protection circuit for the inverter. Now the right hand side of that circuit, that is a one foot piece of six AWG cable that goes to a terminal block that then goes to the house batteries. Now, if I were to have a short, like say that wire where it goes around that corner right there, it chafes through and shorts, it doesn't have circuit protection, just this one foot piece of cable. So it's gonna keep arcing and sparking until um, the wire melts away or potential fire, scary. So I think what I'm gonna do right there is I'll do a little bit of chafe protection on that corner. I'll figure that out in a moment. Um, and then you'll see down here, I have a another breaker that's the main disconnect breaker between the engine start battery and the house battery. This feeds a ACR circuit, which is a, a circuit that detects vo alternator voltage. So basically when you get around 13 volts, the ACR switch closes to combine the engine start and the house batteries. 
which means the alternator is charging all battery banks, house and engine. The inverter came with a red and black wire. I think they're about 18 inches long. And uh, this is the terminal side for the inverter. This is intended to go right on the terminal of a battery, but I'm actually going to a terminal block under my countertop. So I need to cut this off and crimp on a smaller diameter. I think this is a quarter inch. And I've got this crimping tool, a little hydraulic hand crimper to do the job. And then I've got some heat shrink. Heat shrink's a little bit too big. It's a two to one shrink ratio and that's three quarter inch. So it's a little loose. It, it's, I already did the red one and I get a nice tight press of heat shrink around the, the lug here, but on the cable side, there's a little bit of an air gap. It's a little big, but it doesn't slide around. So it's serving the purpose. I made it a little extra long just in case. All right, everything's connected. Positive to positive, negative to negative. I turn the breaker on. No smoke, that's good. Power up. Hmm. Is it press and hold? All right, got a green light. And I read in the manual, the fan doesn't kick on until it needs to. So I put this in the cab intentionally so that it would be air conditioned when I'm driving. I think it's really hot in the back. Oh, the glamour of media and filmmaking. Had a really easy day today. 10 a.m. call. We were wrapped with the truck packed at 1 p.m. It's about three hours. Shot two interviews, single FX9 and two newer LED panels, plus a boom mic. So yeah, I had um, I think a total of four stands, indoors, tripod, camera, single battery on the camera, and obviously one card fraction of a card then I jumped in the truck uh, two o'clock we had a nice sit down lunch for an hour got on the road at 2 p.m. and now it's about quarter of 10 p.m. drove uh, about seven seven and a half hours I'm now outside of Victoria Texas which is south east near the coast working in Corpus Christi tomorrow had a noon call time but they just pushed it to 1 30 p.m. so I'm gonna sleep in in the morning Take a shower here at the truck stop. Maybe get a little exercise first, figure something out. Be running laps here in the parking lot or in that grassy area over there. And then, uh, yeah, have a nice leisurely sit down breakfast, do some bookkeeping, and then on to the weekend events. Arrived at the Omni Hotel, Corpus Christi, Texas. I guess it's been a full year. I'm reminded every day. My last day here, the valet did this to my wheel.
It's so chaotic in the loading dock last night. I didn't case my gear. Uh, drop things in the side door. This charger cut out again. When I shake it, it turns off and on. So got a loose connection I can't find. I think I'm just, I, I said it before, but I, I gotta just order a new one. This one has proved not reliable. I only brought this one into the venue. I left the other one in the truck and then I didn't have time to run back to the truck during the show. But fortunately I had enough batteries to get through the evening.